You need to change your inner tube. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to do it quickly and properly. Lots of cyclists think they know how to do it, but they often make key little mistakes, which mean they get another puncture just minutes later. Watching this video will stop that happening. Step one, make yourself a brew, preferably in a GCN mug, available from shop.global cycling network. Why? Well, every job is better with a brew. Step two, take your wheel out that you need to change the tube on and then use a tire lever to lift the tire bead off the rim on one side so that you can remove the tube. With the bead off the rim on one side, you should now be able to remove the inner tube. At this point, if you need to change your tire as well, this is the time to do it. remove the tire and put a fresh one on. Step three, inspect the tire for damage. Try and ascertain what caused the puncture. Run your finger along the inside of the tire carefully to see if you can find any sharp objects poking through that may still be embedded. It's important to remove these because if you don't, when you put in a fresh inner tube, you'll probably get a puncture almost instantly. If your tire has a big hole in it, then you'll either need to install a patch on the inside of the tire, or if you don't have a patch, you can get an old piece of tire and then simply place that over the hole on the inside. If you don't have that, when you're in a pinch, you can also use an old gel wrapper or something like that to also plug it and get you home. This is important to do because without it, when you put in the new inner tube, it will bulge out of the hole like a hernia and then go bang. Step four, take your fresh tube and pump a tiny little bit of air in it to give it some shape. This is especially important if you're installing latex inner tubes or fancy thin polyurethane ones such as this. Step five, position the tire in the correct place. This is crucial and something many riders get wrong. Have one side of the tire bead on the rim bed of the wheel and fit the inner tube into the rim bed, working it around. Then make sure the tire bead is pulled into the center of the rim bed all the way around, ideally into the little U-shaped channel if there is one. This makes pushing the other side of the bead on much easier. Step six, put the other side of the bead on the rim. I personally find it easiest to start at the tire valve, although some people swear by doing it at the opposite end of the tire valve. And remember, this step is far easier if you've got the other side of the tire bead that's already on the rim centered the entire way round. When you get to the final, often stubborn bit of bead to place onto the rim, don't be tempted, as tempting as it may be, to use tire levers, as this will often damage the inner tube on the inside and then just give you another puncture straight away. Just persist with both sides of your thumbs like this and just working it gradually and it's on, done. With the tire and tube in place, you then want to inspect the rim the whole way round before inflating it. What you're checking for is that the inner tube isn't caught under the bead of the tire. If it is, when you come to inflate it, it could go bang. If you do find a bit where the inner tube is caught under the bead, you can often free it and get it to sit inside the tire by just giving it a wiggle from side to side like this. Step eight, inflate your tire. But before you do so, if you're not sure what pressure you should be running, make sure you check what the maximum pressure is. It's often written on the side of the tire, but in many cases, this will be far more than you actually need. If you want to know what pressure you should be running based on your system and weight, well, there's handy guides on the Pirelli website. As you inflate the tire, keep an eye on what it's doing. You might hear a crack sound as the bead snaps into place on the wheel rim. This 
is normal. But what you should be looking out for is that the tyre is seated properly the whole way round and isn't bulging out on any particular spot or location. If it is, deflate it, give it a wiggle to make sure that the inner tube is properly seated in there and then reinflate. And there you have it, inflated tyre. If you, you follow these steps, you should have no issues whatsoever. All that remains is to just sit back, enjoy your brew and admire your handiwork. If you find these kind of maintenance videos useful, well, subscribe to GCN Tech for more of them. And if you want to support the channel, just give us a thumbs up. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.